A baseball glove is an extraordinary thing. Each and every one starts out brand spanking new and ends up fitting its owner like a second skin. Before long, the player and his glove are inseparable. The glove helps him live his dreams and fills his imagination with lifelong memories. Baseball gloves have evolved from hard leather mitts to the sophisticated design players depend on today. It all starts with a hydraulic press that punches out the felt padding that will cushion the fingers and thumb. The holes will be used to lace the glove. Another press cuts out the palm section of the glove from a side of leather. The palm section also has lacing holes cut into it. The press then cuts out the web or pocket of the glove, preparing it for lacing as well. Meanwhile, a machine heat embosses the palm section with the company logo. Embossing also helps identify different leathers and glove styles. Another worker hand weaves the front and back pieces of the pocket. This special basket weave web gives the glove additional flexibility and control. Pockets first appeared in gloves in the 1930s. She stitches the pocket together. Then she applies glue to secure the tail ends, closes the flap, and stitches the web shut. Another worker then sews the palm lining and the finger lining together. By stitching the palm and finger linings together, she completes the interior piece of the glove that touches a player's hand. She then sews the felt finger pads to the lining. These pads give the glove extra comfort and control. To build the outer shell of the glove, she sews welting leather between the fingers. This makes the seams stronger. Then she sews the fingers and the palm piece together to complete the back part of the outer shell. Some leather softener helps prevent tearing as she stitches the back and the front parts of the outer shell together. She also uses welting leather to add strength and rigidity to the outer shell. A worker mounts the finished outer shell onto a finger form heated to about 120 degrees Celsius. It takes heat and leather softener to allow the worker to manipulate the shell without damaging the leather. The worker then transfers the softened outer shell onto a stationary turning stick in order to turn the outer shell inside out. He works the outer shell one finger at a time so he doesn't spoil the leather or the stitching. He makes sure all is perfect. Another worker slips the interior lining onto a mounting support, then covers the lining with the outer shell. He works the leather to make sure the lining and the shell fit together properly. Then he applies a special paste that makes the palm more flexible. He inserts a felt pad into the thumb. Then another cushioning pad into the pinky finger, using a metal rod to fully insert both pads. He then starts lacing the glove with a long strip of leather. Lacing the glove is a labor-intensive skill that can take up to an hour. No machine can do this. He makes sure the lacing gets the right tension and the attractive side of the leather faces upwards. Using special knots and loops, he laces the entire glove by hand. A worker inserts wooden dowels and mounts the glove on more hot fingers to open up the fingers and thumb. This helps the player's hand fit into the glove more easily. Now this truly looks and fits like a glove. Today's baseball gloves come in all different colors and styles. They are so finely handcrafted, they could be called works of art. I don't